day one, dear Nula, thank you very much for your lovely present of a partridge in a pear tree. We're getting the hang of feeding the partridge now, although it was difficult at first to win its confidence. It bit the mother rather badly in the hand, but they're good friends now, and we are keeping the pear tree indoors in a bucket. Thank you again. Yours affectionately, Governor O'Lunacy. Day two, dear Nula, I cannot tell you how surprised we were to hear from you so soon again and to receive your lovely present of two turtle doves. You really are too kind. At first, the partridge was very jealous and suspicious of the doves, and they had a terrible row the night the doves arrived, and we had to send for the vet. But the two birds are okay again, and the stitches are due to come out in a week or two. The vet's bill was eight pound, but the mother is over her annoyance now, and the doves and the partridge are watching the telly from the pear tree as a right. Yours ever, Governor. Day three, dear Nula, we must be foremost in your thoughts. I had only posted my letter when the three French hens arrived. There was another sort out between the hens and the doves who sided with the partridge, and the vet had to be sent for again. The mother was raging, for the bill was sixteen pound this time, but she has almost cooled down. However, the fact that the bird's droppings keep falling on her hair while she's watching the telly doesn't help matters. Thank you for your kindness. I remain your goblet. Day four. Dear Nula, you mustn't have received my last letter when you were sending us the four calling birds. There was pandemonium in the pear tree again last night, and the vet's bill was thirty-two pound. The mother's done sedation as a right. I know you meant no harm, and remain your close friend, Governor. Day five. Nula, your generosity knows no bounds. Five gold rings. <laughs> when the parcel arrived, I was scared stiff that it might be more birds, because the smell in the living room was atrocious. However, I don't want to seem ungrateful for the beautiful rings. Your affectionate friend, Gobnet. Day six. Nula, what are you trying to do to us? It isn't that we don't appreciate your generosity, but the six geese have not alone nearly murdered the calling birds, but they laid their eggs on top of the poor vet's head from the top of the pear tree, and his bill was sixty-eight pound in cash. The mother is munching sixty grains of valium a day and talking to herself in a most alarming way. You must keep your feelings for me in check, Gobnet. Day seven. Nula, we are not amused by your little joke. Seven swans are swimming is a most romantic idea, but not in the bath of a private house. We cannot use the bathroom now because they have gone completely savage and rush the door every time we try to enter. If things go on this way, the mother and I will smell as bad as the living room carpet. Please, lay off, for it's not fair. Gotten it. Dead. Nula, who the hell do you think gives you the right to send Eight hefty maids are milking here to eat us out of house and home. Their kettle is all over the front lawn and has trampled the hail out of the mother's rose beds. The swans invaded the living room in a sneak attack and the ensuing battles between them and the calling birds, turtle doves, French hens and partridge made the battle of the Somme look like a garden party. The mother is on a bottle of whiskey a day, as well as sixty grains of valium. I'm very annoyed with you, Gobnut. Day nine. Listen, you, you, you. There's enough pandemonium in this place, night and day, without nine drummers drumming, while the eight flaming maids of milking is beating the poor old alcoholic mother out of her own kitchen and gobbling up everything in sight. I'm warning you, you're making an enemy of me, gobbling it. Day 10. Listen, manure face. 
I hope you'll be haunted by the strains of the ten pipers piping which you sent to Tementos last night. They were aided in their evil work by those maniac drummers, and it wasn't a pleasant sight to look out the window and see eight hefty maids of milking going round with the ensuing punk rock uproar. My mother has just finished her third bottle of whiskey on top of 124 grains of Valium. You'll get yours. Garden at O'Lunacy. Day 11. You have scandalized my poor mother, you dirty Jezebel. It was bad enough to have eight maids of milking dancing to punk music on the front lawn. But they have now been joined by your friends, the eleven lords of leaping, and the antics of the whole lot of them would leave the most decadent days of the Roman Empire looking like a Sunday school outing. I'll get you yet, you old bag. Day twelve. Listen, slurry head. You've ruined our lives. The twelve maidens dancing turned up last night and beat the living daylights out of the eight maids of milking because they found them carrying on with the eleven lords of leaping. Meanwhile, the swans got out of the living room where they'd been hiding since the big battle and savaged the hail out of the lords and all the ladies. There were eight ambulances here last night and the local civil defence as well. The mother is in a home for the bewildered and I'm sitting here up to my neck in birds' droppings, empty whiskey and valium bottles, birds' blood and feathers when the flaming cows eat the leaves off the pear tree. I'm a broken man. Some Christmas I'm having. Governor, don't lunacy. <laughs>